Welcome back to the Campbell Tech channel. My name is Sean Campbell and today I'm going to show you how to implement the singleton design pattern in Python. The singleton design pattern is a creational design pattern that ensures that a class can only have a single instance and it provides a global point of access anywhere in the application to that instance. It basically restricts the instantiation of a class to a single object allowing that object to be easily accessible throughout the application. We are now going to code the singleton pattern. So the first thing we need to do is to create our virtual environment as you know by now. So in VS Code, again, you can hold down Control, Shift and P and then select Python Create Environment. Again, let's use VEnv and select the Global Interpreter. Then let's go ahead and create our singleton class. So go ahead and create a new file and call it singleton underscore logger. We are going to call our class singleton logger. So say class singleton logger. And then the first thing we need to do is to create that instance global variable that you saw in the UML class diagram. So call it underscore instance because we are going to treat it as a private global variable and then set it to none because remember that only the get instance method should be allowed to instantiate that very one instance of the singleton class. So then let's create an init method, our constructor. Now importantly, in other languages, you actually want to go ahead and create a private constructor, only a private constructor, so that no external code or calling code can create multiple instances of the singleton logger class. But in Python, as you know by now, we don't have access modifiers, nor can we define an init method as private. Therefore, we are going to say that if somebody tries to instantiate the singleton logger class by bypassing the get instance method, which we'll define just now, then we are going to raise a runtime error. So let's say raise runtime error, and then we'll have a message such as this is a singleton invoke get underscore instance instead. Okay, and then we are going to define our get instance function. Now, importantly, this get instance function needs to be a class method. Now, a class method is bound to the class itself rather than to an instance of singleton logger in our case. So, to make the get instance method a class method, we need to use the class method annotation. And then let's define our method. We'll say get underscore instance and then importantly a class method doesn't take self like an instance method for example this init method is an instance method our constructor but in this case this is a class method so we'll use cls rather than self okay and then we'll say if cls dot underscore instance equals none then we are going to instantiate it. And we'll do it a little bit different than usual. So if we say CLS dot underscore instance and say singleton logger, like we would instantiate a normal class, then it will actually hit our init method and raise a runtime error. So then it's besides the point. And then we might as well take out this runtime error and then we'll struggle to actually prevent calling code from creating multiple instances of the singleton logger class. Instead we can actually go ahead and say cls dot and then we can invoke the new method and then pass cls. The new method is a special type of static method that you can use to create a new instance of a class. And importantly, this method is always invoked before the init method. That's why it'll actually not hit our init method in this case, 
but this static new method will actually create a new instance of the singleton logger and in this case only the get instance method will be allowed to create a new instance of singleton logger and because we have this if statement we'll only do it once and then we'll simply return cls dot underscore instance so the first time the get instance method is invoked we'll check if it's null our instance variable if it is we'll instantiate it using our new static method and then we'll return that instance to the calling code okay so that is basically everything we need for a singleton class implementation but because we are using this singleton class as a logging system we also need to go ahead and add instance functions that will allow you to log an exception and a normal message of type string so let's define two methods call it log this is an instance method of that very one instance that we'll be returning and then it will take in a single parameter let's call it ex of type exception and we can print out the exception and let's also add an overloaded method for logging a message of type string again it's an instance method so let's say self comma message of type string and we'll say print message okay so now we have completed our singleton class next up we need to define our client logic so let's create a main.py file I'm going to say from singleton logger to import our singleton logger class. And then we can say we need a main method. And then importantly, we should try and create multiple instances of the singleton logger class and then test if it works. So first of all, let's say singleton logger one equals singleton logger dot get underscore instance and then let's try if it actually works so we'll first say singleton logger 2 and then let's try to instantiate it the normal way now remember we have that runtime error that we're raising if somebody tries to do this but we can actually test that and then let's so long say if singleton logger 1 is the same as singleton logger 2 then we'll print out something like same instance singleton pattern correctly implemented and then we'll log something using one of the instances let's use singleton logger 2 dot log I'm just going to log a normal message, a string message saying something like this is logged using a singleton logging system. And then just to make sure that this main method is actually the first method that gets invoked in our application, we'll say if underscore underscore name equals underscore underscore main underscore underscore then we'll invoke our main method our client code all right so that's all we need to do so go ahead and add a breakpoint there and then let's debug hit f5 and then click python file again all right so we can step into the code with f11 so here we can see that instance is still none you'll see that it gets instantiated press f11 specifically for stepping into it and then as you can see it actually doesn't call the init method we can put a breakpoint there just so that we can make a hundred percent sure so stop the code and then let's run it again I'm going to step into the code again so as you can see it doesn't hit our init method and we do have a new instance of our singleton logger class and then we'll return that instance field and now we are going to try and instantiate it in the normal way 
and in this time it actually hits our init method and raises the runtime error. And as you can see there, this is a singleton invoke get instance instead. Okay, let's fix our client logic and basically invoke the get instance method again. Let's debug again. Let's step into the get instance method. So the first time the instance is none, it gets instantiated and returns it. And as you can see there, we have a new instance of singleton logger. Step into it again, this time it's not none. It's already instantiated. We skip the new instantiation and return that single instance of the singleton logger class. Then we check if it's the same, and in fact it is, and we print out same instance singleton pattern correctly implemented, and we log something to the console. This is logged using a singleton logging system. So as you can see, it's extremely simple to implement the singleton pattern in Python. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and like it and subscribe to our channel. Till next time.